வணக்கம் 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 அன்பார்ந்த மாணவர்களே உங்கள் அனைவரையும் மீண்டும் சந்திப்பதில் ஆசிரியர் பெரும் மகிழ்ச்சி கொள்கின்றேன் மலேசிய தமிழ் ஆசிரியர்களின் கற்பித்தல் தளம் மலேசியாவில் உள்ள தமிழ் பள்ளி மாணவர்களுக்காக பல அரிய நிகழ்ச்சிகளை இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்குகளை மிக சிறப்பாக நடத்தி வருகின்றது இதற்கு முக்கியமான காரணம் நம்முடைய பாரதி கற்பனை தளத்தில் வந்து போதிக்கும் ஆசிரியர்களுடைய சிறப்பையே சேரும் ஆகவே இவ்வேளையில் இதுவரை இந்த இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்குகள் மிக சிறப்பாக நடைபெற எனக்கு உறுதுணையாக இருந்த அத்தனை ஆசிரியர்களுக்கும் வேலையில் எனது நன்றி தனை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கின்றேன் ஆஹ் மென்மேலும் மாணவர்கள் கல்வியில் சிறந்தோங்க வேண்டும் கல்வியில் அவர்கள் சிறப்புடன் இருக்க வேண்டும் அதே சமயத்தில் வீட்டில் இருக்கும் மாணவர்கள் கற்றலில் எவ்வித தடையும் ஏற்பட்டு விடக்கூடாது என்பதற்காகவே இது போன்ற இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்குகளை தொடர்ந்து பாரதி கற்பனை தளம் மிக சிறப்பாக நடத்தி வருகின்றது மாணவர்களுடைய பேராதரவு பங்கேற்பு உண்மையிலே எங்களுக்கு மிகப்பெரிய பலம் என்றுதான் சொல்ல வேண்டும் அவ்வகையில் தொடர்ந்து நம்முடைய இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்குகளில் கலந்து கொண்டிருக்கும் மாணவர்களுக்கு ஒரு சபாஷ் அவர்களுக்கு வாழ்த்துக்கள் நீங்கள் எங்களுடைய இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்கில் கலந்து கொண்டு கல்வி சார்ந்த பல அறிவு அனுபவத்தை திறன்களை பெற்று வருகின்றீர்கள் உங்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வேலையில் வாழ்த்துக்களை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கின்றேன் ஆக மாணவர்களே இன்று நம்முடைய ஆங்கிலம் தொடர்பான இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்கம் நடைபெறவிருக்கின்றது இந்த இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்கத்தை வழிநடத்த வந்திருக்கின்றார் கலைமணி ராமகிருஷ்ணன் ஆசிரியை திருமதி கலைமணி ராமகிருஷ்ணன் அவர் வந்து ஆங்கில ஆசிரியர் அனுபவம் வாய்ந்த ஆசிரியர்கள் ஆசிரியர்கள் என்றாலே அவர்கள் அனுபவம் வாய்ந்தவர்களாகவும் திறமை வாய்ந்தவர்களாகவும் இருப்பார்கள் ஆகவே ஆங்கில மொழி பாடத்தில் அனுபவம் மிக்க ஒரு ஆசிரியர் தான் என்று உங்களுக்காக பாடத்தை வழிநடத்த காத்திருக்கின்றார் ஆகவே மாணவர்களே நீங்கள் நான் எப்பொழுதும் வலியுறுத்தக்கூடியது ரூல்ஸ் அண்ட் ரெகுலேஷன் ஓகே நம்ம வெவ்வினாருக்கு சில விதிமுறைகள் இருக்கின்றன ஆகவே நீங்கள் அதனை பின்பற்ற வேண்டும் உங்களுடைய அந்த காமெண்ட் பாக்ஸ்ல இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்கத்திற்கு தொடர்பு இல்லாத கருத்துக்களை நீங்கள் பதிவிடக்கூடாது உங்களுடைய பெயரை பதிவிட்ட பிறகு நீங்கள் முழுமையாக ஆசிரியர் சொல்லிக் கொடுக்கும் பாடத்தில் கவனம் செலுத்தும்படி அன்போடு கேட்டுக்கொள்கின்றேன் அப்பொழுதுதான் வந்து உங்களுடைய கற்றல் மிக சிறப்பாக இருக்கும் ஆசிரியர்களுடைய கற்பித்தல் மிக சிறப்பாக நடைபெறும் ஆகவே மாணவர்களே நாளை நம்முடைய வெபினார் நான்கு புள்ளி சொல்லியும் இறுதி நாள் நாளைக்கு பிறகு உங்களுக்கான நற்சான்றிதழ் கட்டம் கட்டமாக ஏற்கனவே ஆசிரியர் சொன்னது போல அனுப்பி வைக்கப்படும் ஆகவே தொடர்ந்து எங்களோடு இணைந்திருங்கள் எங்களோடு இணைந்து கல்வி கற்றுக் கொண்டே இருங்கள் பாரதி கற்பனை தளம் பாரதி கிரியேட்டிவ் சேனல் தொடர்ந்து மாணவர்களுடைய கல்வி நல நலனுக்காகவும் ஆற்றலை வளர்ப்பதற்காகவும் தொடர்ந்து பல அரிய நிகழ்ச்சிகளை நடத்தி கொண்டே இருக்கும் ஆகவே நாட்டில் உள்ள பல மாநிலங்களிலிருந்து பல பள்ளிகளிலிருந்து தொடர்ந்து நம் மாணவர்கள் நம்முடைய இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்குகளை கவனித்து வருகின்றார்கள் அதன் வழி வாயிலாக பயன்பெற்று வருகின்றார்கள் ஆகவே உங்கள் அனைவருக்கும் நன்றி அவர்களுக்கு உற்ற துணையாக இருக்கும் பெற்றோர்களுக்கு இவ்வேளையில் நன்றி தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கின்றேன் ஓகே நேரத்தை தாழ்த்தாமல் ஆஹ் தொடர்ந்து நம்முடைய இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்கம் ஆங்கில மொழி பாடத்தை வழி நடத்துவதற்காக திருமதி கலைமணி ராமகிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களை அன்போடு அழைக்கின்றேன் I am teacher Kalimani here feeling glad to engage with all of you on a wonderful evening. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. Balamurugan for giving me this opportunity to be a part of Bharati Creative Channel team. Kids, today you are going to learn something from Unit 7 Supermind Year 2. Therefore, at the end of this video you will be getting inputs of a whole unit 7 of supermind year 2 before we start over our lesson don't forget to like and subscribe this channel you may prepare yourself with a notebook and stationeries as to take down notes that you wanted so kids are you ready first Let's practice saying names of clothes. You may listen and repeat after me. Socks. Trousers. Shorts. Skirt. T-shirt. Jacket. Belt. sweater 
mittens tie hat scarf dress cap shoes these are some of the clothes that we usually wear and see in our everyday life right Kids, can you see a cute boy here? Can you tell me what is he wearing? All right, come on, repeat after me. A red t-shirt, a pair of blue shorts, a pair of white socks, a pair of blue and white shoes. If you notice here, we use the word a pair of, right? A pair of before mentioning some clothes. A pair of. What is it? When we can use it? Well, a pair of means two identical or similar things that are matched together. It's like having two parts or pieces joined together. Easily said, when we match the glove on the left side to the right side, we say it as a pair of glove. I hope you understand the meaning of a pair of, right? Children, can you describe what are you wearing today? You may type it in comment box. Right? Okay, some of you might have difficulties putting up the words in correct order when trying to describe something. Now, I'm going to teach you the basic sentence pattern on how to describe what one person is wearing. Now, look at this. Name is wearing a color cloth. This is very basic form of sentence pattern to describe what a person is wearing. Now, let's look at some examples. Assume that this is Monica. So, the name will be Monica. So, Monica is wearing a, the color of a cloth is blue and the type of cloth is dress. So, the sentence will be Monica is wearing a blue dress, right? This is how we describe one person, uh, what one person is wearing, right? Let's look at more example, right? Now, again, name. First, we start off with name, uh, name. So, the boy's name is Darwin. Assume uh, as the boy's name is Darwin, right? So, Darwin is wearing, so followed by is wearing, now, the word a uh, here changed to n because the next word starts with a vowel letter. So, n, the color of the cloth uh, is orange and the type of cloth is t-shirt. So, when we say it in a full form, Darwin is wearing an orange t-shirt. All right, now let's describe what this boy is wearing. You can listen and repeat after me. He is wearing a red t-shirt. Again, he is wearing a red t-shirt. He is wearing a pair of blue shorts. Again, he is wearing a pair of blue shorts. He is wearing a pair of orange shoes. Okay, the word he here is referring to this boy. 
right? And before we start to describe, uh, always make sure that we describe from top to bottom, right? To avoid any notes to be out, all right? Any notes to be missed out. All right, kids. Now, teacher going to ask you a few questions. You may type your reply as yes, he is or no, he isn't in the comment box. If you have any family members sitting next to you, you can ask these questions to them as well and get a reply from them. Shall we start? The first question, is he wearing a red t-shirt? So your answer must be yes, he is or no, he isn't. Okay, shall we check the answer? Is he wearing a red t-shirt? Is this a red t-shirt? Yes. So, the answer is yes, he is. Your answer must be in full form. Don't only give one word answer like yes, no, right? Always give uh, your answer in full form. Okay, we go for the second question. Is he wearing a cap? Is he wearing any cap? The answer is no, he isn't. Again, no, he isn't. Right, we go for the third question. Is he wearing a pair of orange shoes? Is he wearing a pair of orange shoes? So now look at his shoes. Are they orange in color? If yes, then your answer should be yes, he is. Yes, he is. The fourth question. Is he wearing a pair of trousers? Is he wearing a pair of trousers? Is he wearing a pair of trousers here? If you remember uh, what we have uh, read the, in the previous slide, so you would have known the answer by now, right? So, of course, this is not a trousers. These are a pair of shorts. So, the answer is no, he isn't. No, he isn't. Right, next. Let's describe what this cheerful girl is wearing. You can listen and repeat after me. Okay, again, uh, we have to, uh, we can describe from top to bottom, right? So we start from top to bottom. So the first sentence will be, she is wearing a pink blouse. She is wearing a pink blouse. She is wearing a pair of orange trousers. She is wearing a pair of orange trousers. The third one. She is wearing a pair of black shoes. She is wearing a pair of black shoes. All right, the word she here is referring to the girl. Okay, again, teacher going to ask some questions, right? You may reply your answers in the comment box below, right? Shall we start? Is, sorry, is she wearing a dress? Is this girl wearing a dress? No, she isn't. She is not wearing a dress. So the answer is no, she isn't. Always remember, you must give your answer in full form. All right, this is considered a full form. All right, so I don't want you to only give answer in one word, like no, yes, no, yes, all right? I want you to give your answer in full form, okay? No, she isn't. Now we go for next question. Is she wearing a pink blouse? Is this a pink blouse? Yes. So your reply will be, yes, 
she is yes she is okay, now we go for the third one is she wearing a hat is she wearing a hat is there any hat here no so the answer will be no she isn't no she isn't right the last question is she wearing a pair of trousers is she wearing a pair of trousers is this a pair of trousers yes so the answer will be yes she is right i hope you will have learned about uh, the sentence pattern for asking a question right and then uh, how to answer for it if yes means yes she is yes he is right if no means no she isn't no he isn't right so let's go for the next one let's describe about a young boy it's always advisable to describe from top to bottom right as i mentioned earlier so always uh, describe from top to bottom so that you don't miss anything out this time we are adding in more details like his name and age right so now read along with me okay we're going to describe about this boy this is meshan he is 8 years old he is wearing a grey cap, a white and blue t-shirt, a pair of brown trousers and a pair of black shoes. Right? If you look here, we have added more details other than describing what is he wearing. Right? Uh, more details means the name, okay, the boy's name is Meishan and he is eight years old. And then we start to describe what is he wearing from top to bottom, right? Okay, here is another one, right? Read along with me. This is Amy. She is nine years old. She lives in Canada. It is winter season in Canada. She is wearing a red and white winter hat, a green sweater, a red woolen mittens, a pair of blue jeans, and a pair of brown winter shoes. Kids, if you notice, in this passage, we added more information such as her name, right, her age, place of stay, and the weather. If you are studying in upper primary, like year 4, year 5, year 6, it's better to add more details when you're describing something, right? But make sure that the added points are relevant to your essay, okay? Now... Let's try this reading comprehension and then uh, we can try answer the questions that follows. Okay, you can read along with me. Now, this passage is a bit uh, longer than the previous one. Okay. Shall we start? This is Jason. He is going to a library. He is wearing a yellow t-shirt a pair of brown trousers and a pair of red shoes. When he goes to the park, he wears a pair of shorts, a t-shirt, a cap and a pair of sport shoes. He has blue, yellow and purple sport shoes. He likes all his sport shoes. When he goes to school, he wears a white shirt, a pair of trousers and white shoes. He also wears a tie. I hope you understand the passage. 
right? So overall, the first paragraph explains what Jason is wearing when he going to library. The second paragraph tells the attires he wears when going to a park. The third one, right? We can know his uh, school wear from here, from the third paragraph. Right now, let's try to answer the questions now, right? You may type your answers in the chat box and then later on, you may check your answers along the way, right? Now, let's look at the first question. What does Jason wear to the park? Again, what does Jason wear to the park? Options are A, shorts, B, jeans, C, trousers. All right, before we answer the questions, you must know the keyword of the question. So the keyword here is park, right? The word park. So now we have to go to the passage and then find for the word park. So now the word park is in the second paragraph. And then you can start to read again the paragraph or uh, the sentence to find for the answer. Now, shall we read again the second paragraph? When he goes to the park, okay, the word park, right? He wears a pair of shorts, a t-shirt, a cap, and a pair of sport shoes. So actually for, okay, for going to the park, he's wearing all these attires. So now we go back to the option and then we check there which of these answer is there in the option. Right? So, shorts, jeans, and trousers. The answer will be a pair of shorts. So, the correct answer is A, shorts. Now, we go for the second one. What are the clothes that Jason likes? Right? So, the keyword here is likes what he likes okay what are the clothes that he likes so the options are a cap b jeans c sport shoes now again as i mentioned earlier we must uh, go to the paragraph and then we look for the keyword all right so the the keyword is in second paragraph now shall we read the sentence he likes all his sport shoes. So likes, the answer will be sport shoes. Now, it's obvious when we check in the option, option C carries the correct answer, sport shoes. Now, we go for the third question. What is Jason wearing to the library? So the key word here is library. Right, the keyword here is library. Again, we go to the passage and look for the keyword. Now we find it in the first paragraph. Shall we read that paragraph? Okay, we read from here. We start from here. He is going to a library. He is wearing a yellow t shirt, a pair of brown trousers and a pair of red shoes, right? Since it is a subjective question and they never provide any options here, so it means we can write all the answers, okay? All these answers there, okay? So now let's look at the answer. He is wearing a yellow t-shirt, a pair of brown trousers, and a pair of red shoes to the library. All right. If you are still struggling to find for the answers from a passage, so I can encourage you to write only the answers first. Okay. This is the first step. Okay. Try to find for the answers from the paragraph and write down the answers first. Right. Once you 
already able to find uh, lo or looking for the answers from the paragraph, then you may practice for writing the answers in a full sentence like this, uh, like uh, adding on he is wearing and then at the end of the sentence, you can add on like to the library, right? If you're still, you know, still, you feel like I'm still beginning, I'm still in the beginning level. So first, you can uh, try yourself uh, to look for the answers by uh, using the keyword from the question. Okay, I hope you understand how to find for the answers from the passage, right? Now we go for the last question. Name two cloths that Jason wears to school. Name two cloths that Jason wears to school. Right, now, can you identify what are the keywords in this question? Two cloths and then school. Now, we are going to look for the keyword from the passage. So, the word school is in the third paragraph. Now, shall we read again the paragraph? When we, sorry, when he goes to school, he wears a white shirt, a pair of trousers, and white shoes. He also wears a tie. Right, if you look at this paragraph, it is very clear that he is wearing a white shirt, a pair of trousers, white shoes, also a tie. Okay, even though the word tie is written in a different sentence, but still we have to take into account this answer. So all together, he is wearing four attires like a white shirt. Second is a pair of trousers. Third is white shoes. And the fourth is a tie. So there are actually four answers here. But if we look at the question, they are only asking for two answers. So you can choose any two from these four options. Okay, here there are, there are four, so you can choose any two. Either a white shirt, a pair of trousers, or a white shirt with a tie, or a white shirt with a white shoes, or a pair of trousers, a tie, okay, up to you. You can choose any two from here, from these four answers. Okay, let's look at what teacher is uh, picking up. Huh? Okay, so my answers are a tie and a pair of white shoes. All right, so I hope um, you understand how to read a passage, how to look for the answers, okay, how to understand a question by, by, you know, by finding out the keywords, okay. Now, kids. Do you wish to have some drawing and coloring time? Well, you can read the descriptions of Jivina's and Patrick's favorite clothes. Draw and color the outfits on them. So this is more like, you know, uh, drawing and coloring. So now let's look at the descriptions for Jivina. What are her favorite clothes? Green sweater, white jeans, red sport shoes, red cap. For Patrick, yellow shirt, black coat, brown pants, and yellow shoes. Right? I give you a minute for you to write down these notes so that you may try drawing and coloring this during your free time. Right? Giving you time now so you can start to copy down the notes. All right. Okay. Now we go for the next one. Kids, how do you know if someone likes something? Here I'm giving you three ways to know what someone likes. Right. The first one, by their expression or face reaction. 
Someone's expression or face reaction can reveal a lot about what they like and don't like. Okay, the second one, right? If they tell you what they like or don't like. Other than that, I mean, um, other than this face reaction, right? Sometimes people may outspoken of what they like or don't like. For example, they might tell you directly, hey, see, I like this or no, I don't like this, all right? So that's how you can know what uh, someone like or don't like something. Huh? The third one is by asking question. You also can ask questions to get more information. Right. So today we are going to focus on this. I mean, focus more on this and a little on the face expression. Let's learn the basic sentence pattern of asking what other person like. Right. So we can start with, do you like, you may repeat after me, do you like, right now let's look at examples. Do you like cap, repeat after me, do you like cap, next. Do you like trousers? Do you like trousers? So now, here are more examples. You can practice um, saying these uh, questioning dialogues, right? Do you like dress? Do you like sweater? Do you like bag? Do you like watch? Kids, is it enough if we keep asking questions? We also must master the skill of giving proper reply. Means you must know how to give a proper reply, not only asking these questions. Huh? So if someone come and ask you, do you like wearing t-shirt? Do you like wearing skirt? What will be your reply? Right, so you can reply yes i do if you like some something or no i don't if you don't like right so these are the proper way of giving a reply if someone asks you if you like something now let's look at the answer let's look at some examples again uh, do you like cap if someone come and ask to you do you like cap right assume that this is your face reaction right now you are smiling which means Yes, it means you like the cap. So your answer will be, yes, I do. Right? Yes, I do. Now we go for the second one. Do you like trousers? Right, now look at your face. Imagine that this is your facial reaction. All right? So you're looking sad. It means you don't like these trousers. So your answer will be, no, I don't. Again, no, I don't. Now, here are more examples of for replying. Huh? Do you like dress? So we can uh, look at this emoji, whether it's smiling or become sad to answer yes or no. So normally, if you like something, your face reaction will be happy, right, and cheerful. If you don't like something, your facial uh, expression will be sad, worried, you know, not happy. So from there, uh, you can know whether someone likes or not on about something, all right? So do you like dress? Yes, I do. Do you like sweater? Look at the sad face. So no, I don't. Do you like the back? Hmm, the emoji is sad. So, no, I don't. Do you like watch? Now, this emoji is smiling. So, yes, I do. Right, I hope you try using this in daily basis to your friends and family. Right, always practice this, these dialogues and the replies in your daily basis. Now, let's focus 
on the words this and these. We use this for singular nouns. Right? Singular noun means one object. And we use these for plural nouns. Plural noun means object more than one. Okay, can you repeat after me? This. These. Okay, now let's look at some examples. Okay, how many t-shirt can you see here? One. If one t-shirt means it's a singular noun. If it's a singular noun, you will use the word this. So, this t-shirt. Repeat after me. This t-shirt. Here you can see a lot of t-shirts, more than one. So, if it is more than one, they are plural. If plural, we use the word these t-shirts. Again, these t-shirts. Okay, now let's look at the next one. Shoe. How many shoe are here? Only one. So, this shoe. This shoe. For this, here are more shoes. So, we use the word these shoes. Okay, these shoes. Okay, now let's do more practice on questioning and answering. Okay, look at the first one. Do you like this skirt? Do you like this skirt? Okay, we use the word this here because there is only one skirt. Okay, and all, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, before you give your answer, you can refer to the emoji. Okay, so the emoji is smiling. That means the answer is, yes, I do. Okay, now we go for the next one. Do you like this jacket? Do you like this jacket? Again, we use the word this here because there is only one jacket here. So the answer for answering, yeah, you have to look at this emoji face and then you have to answer it. No, I don't. Okay, the emoji face looks sad. So the answer is no, I don't. Do you like these ties? Do you like these ties? Okay, we use the word these here because there are more than one tie. So, we use the word these here. The answer will be yes, I do. Obviously, because the emoji face is smiling. And we go for the next one. Do you like these scarves? Do you like these scarves? Okay. Again, we are using the word these here because there are more than one scarf here. And when you're answering, you have to look at this emoji face. It's sad. So the answer is no, I don't. I hope all of you able to apply what have learned so far in your daily life. Okay, like uh, asking questions and also giving a proper answer. All right. So far, any questions, kids? So you may type your questions in the chat box, right? I will try to reply your questions as soon as possible, right? Okay, let's go for the next section from the topic, Get Dressed. Okay, Unit 7, huh? Hmm, so what can you see here? Right, we are wearing clothes every day. Okay, we are wearing clothes every single day. Okay, but do you know how clothes are being made? Because uh, sometimes you can, if you notice, some clothes are soft, some clothes are silky, some clothes are strong and some are thick. So, how these clothes are being made? Why are these differences happening? Right. So, we use fabric materials. We use different fabric materials to stitch 
clothes. Right. Now, actually, there are many types of fabric materials that use to stitch clothes. Okay. Example, cotton, leather, wool, silk, denim, and many more. Okay, denim is the material that normally uh, we wear for jeans. Uh. Jeans is the denim material, okay? So, but for today, we are going to focus on three types of materials only. They are cotton, leather, and wool. Cotton. We are getting cotton from cotton plants, right? This is the cotton plant. This is how the cotton plant looks like. Here are some examples of cotton cloths. Cotton skirt, cotton t-shirt, cotton cap. Right, can you tell me more about uh, cotton cloths that you know? You may type in the chat box. Right, now let's watch a video on how cotton is made. Okay, are you ready to watch a video? Cotton is the most important raw material used in the textile industry. Cotton is converted to cloth and this cloth material is used to make dresses, T-shirts, curtains, and many other things which we use in our daily life. Let us look into the process that are involved in the making of a cotton cloth. First, cotton balls are plucked from cotton plants. They are cleaned and then supplied to the textile industry in large quantities. The cotton is then used to make threads. The threads produced in large quantities are fitted in the weaving machines. Weaving is the most basic process in which two different sets of yarns or threads are interlaced with each other to form a fabric or cloth. Modern weaving machines make the cloth at a very fast pace. It reduces cost and time. Now you know that cotton is the main raw material used in textile industries. All right, kids. So this video is mainly explaining about the process that are involved in the making of a cotton cloth. Right, I'll be sharing this video's link shortly. You may try the link to watch the video uh, later on. Right, now let's look at um, leather material. So, we get leather from animal skin, such as cows, deer, goat, snake, alligator, and many more. Okay, here are some examples of leather cloths. Leather jacket, leather shoe and leather belt so again now you're going to watch another video to know more about the process of leather products the rugged appeal that actually dates back to primitive times when humans rubbed fats into animal skins to preserve them times have changed but leather continues to endure it's strong enough to take a lot of abuse, so it's a very tough act to follow. This leather comes from the hides of cows killed for meat. Without tanning, the cow hides would go to waste. Converting them to leather is a kind of recycling. The first step is to cut each hide in half. They drape the hide over a sawhorse and then stamp an identification code onto it. 
and they slice down the center. The two smaller pieces will be easier to handle and process than one large hide. They load hundreds of the hide sections into this modified cement mixer to undergo some serious hair removal. The mixer is filled with water as a worker dumps in a combination of sodium sulfhydrate and lime. A chemical reaction strips the hair from the hides. They bathe the skins in acid to prime them to absorb tanning salts. The tanning happens inside big wooden drums with prongs that keep the skins from getting tangled during the process. The chrome salts turn the hides a robin's egg blue as they bind to the collagen fibers of the skins. This converts them to leather. They feed the leather grain side up to a machine that splits it into layers. It slices the leather on the flesh side to an even thickness. The cutoffs won't be wasted. They'll be recycled into suede. They check each piece of leather with a gauge to confirm the thickness is uniform. Move the hides. They easily peel away from the glass. It pulls a glass cylinder over the leather repeatedly, and the abrasive action polishes it. This glass is very strong, so it can do this vigorous work without breaking. The end of the production line for this big pile of leather. It will now be the stuff that many things are made of, and it's sure to live up to its tough image. All right, so leather has been used in the textile industry since many years back ago, and animal skin will undergo many chemical process before it becomes strong and sustainable. So this video is mainly explained about the process that are involved in the making of leather products. Right, our teacher will be sharing the link of this video uh, so that you may search for it later on to watch in a full, uh, in, in a full right? So now I just skipped the video because um, we have to go on with another a few lessons. Right. Lastly, we look at wool material. Wool is mainly obtained by shearing fleas from living animals, especially sheep. Right. Simply said, wool gets from sheep's skin or so-called sheep's hair. All right. Or sheep's coat. Right now, here are some examples. A woolen sweater, a woolen hat, and a woolen socks. Now, let's look at this video. Wool fabric is durable, wrinkle-proof, and holds its shape well. It absorbs moisture and insulates against heat and cold. That's why wool is ideal for clothing such as sweaters and coats. Sheep shearers use power shears, removing the fleece in one piece. They discard any stained or inferior wool, then sort the rest according to the quality of the fibers. This grading is based on length, color, waviness, and fineness. The wool is cleaned with detergents before processing. The wool arrives at the factory in compressed bales. Workers untie them and feed the wool into the opening equipment, whose metal tooth rollers comb out and separate the fibers. From there, the fibers go into the blending room, where air currents mix different grades of wool to get the desired texture. Editing machine, where they pass through a series of rollers with thin wire teeth. This untangles the fibers and lines them up parallel to each other. Two 
rollers that twirl them into thinner, rounded strips called robies. The rovings wind onto a spool. Rovings look like yarn, but if you pull on them, they simply tear. They haven't yet been spun, so they have frame. It stretches the roving and spins it tightly, producing wool yarn. The yarn winds onto a bobbin. Inserts 400 strands per minute. After weaving, they burn off vegetal matter such as straw fragments that dye and dry the fabric. All wool fabrics undergo finishing to give them a particular appearance and feel. These spiked rollers created a plush finish. All right. So if you watch there, okay, uh, early of this video, that's the process called fleece shearing, means removing the sheep's coats to get process to become as a wool. So it means they are they are getting the wool from the sheep's uh, coat or sheep's uh, hair, okay, whatever that. So uh, that's how we're getting the woolen cloth, right? So you can watch the full video later by clicking the link provided to know more about the process that are involved in the making of a woolen cloth. So kids, you may search in YouTube uh, using the link of these videos uh, that I've been sharing here, right? So uh, later teacher will upload uh, the links in the comment box. Now, children, do you know each types of materials has different characteristics? Yes, right? For cotton cloths, uh, they are helping us to keep cool during hot or summer season. For wool, a woolen cloths help us to stay warm during cool or winter season. But for the products for, from leather, they are usually strong and mostly are water resist. It means most of the leather products don't get wet easily. Okay, most are not all most. Okay, most of the leather products are uh, water resist. All right. Now, dear kids, I hope you have learned a fruitful lesson today. Covering up Unit 7 topic, Get Dressed from Supermind Year 2, right? Until join again virtually, have a super splendid day ahead. Okay, stay home, stay safe and stay learned. Thank you and good luck to all of you. Now, I'm handing over all of you to Sir Balam Rukan. Okay, thank you very much, teacher. Okay, Asri, Trimadi Kalimani, our girl, Mika Serapana or Bodhane Valangi Kindra, our day, Tayari Pu, Matrum on the information, the videos, reference along the Mika Serapaga and the day. Okay, man over a Pangaripun Mile in Re, Mika Serapaga and the day, Ungul Kiningle or Kaita Kurtunga. Okay, Mika Serapaga in Re Ningal, Pangar Trigger, Ungal Anever Kom, Valtical. Okay. So, entering on there, the Uday Patri on the Katukundi girl, Asri Avakum Ude, and the Uday Murgan in the Tayari Kapa leather. So, Allah on the don't kill animals, okay, very pity. So, in the common la potting a path, okay, play a lot of air, money than I am on there, okay, Unmile, Rumba Vieka Vita there, and on the Nikapatina, number of all the care, the year case under the dark. We depend to nature. Okay, number Sapurtuko, number Urtara Udeo, Elami on the Patina, Edor Vagila number depends to the nature. Okay, Mother Nature. Okay, the number Epri number Sapurtuke, Wunavu in the Yakil in the number Perigrumo, Adapola, Uday, Urtu, the Rukon, the Uday and Patina, Cotton, Upper uh, Patina, and the Murugam animals. So the Lina on the Tayari Kapatan number Niko, the Palavagana, Udegale on the Anindu Kundirkin row. Okay, I don't know a circle, Mari, Food chain, Mari. One ko one on the depend depending arko. Okay, one day one day. Sand the wall dal dhan in the ear kind tulu ang. So agave vandi yeda ina po vandi eight chukala vendo. Agave indriya serapan orre paarathe vandi asriye. Trimadi kali mani mika serapaga valingi na. Aur kinte vary na mande. Baradi karpani talam sarbaga. 
நம்முடைய வாழ்த்துக்களை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்வோம் மாணவர்களுக்கு புரியும்படி இந்த வீடியோ இந்த பிக்சர்ஸ் இதெல்லாம் வந்து உண்மையிலேயே மிக சிறப்பாக தயாரிக்கப்பட்டிருந்தன ஆகவே அவருக்கு நம்முடைய வாழ்த்துக்களை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்வோம் ஆக மாணவர்களே நீங்கள் மீண்டும் இந்த வீடியோவை பார்க்க நினைத்தால் இன்னும் நிறைய ஆசிரியர்கள் ஆசிரியர் வந்து நிறைய கற்றுக் கொடுத்தார் அதை மீண்டும் நீங்கள் பார்க்க வேண்டும் என்று நினைத்தால் இந்த வீடியோ வந்து நீங்கள் மீண்டும் தட்டி பார்க்கலாம் நம்முடைய தமிழ் எடுகேஷன் ஆஃப் பிரைமரி எச்சேகேத்தி ஆனா எப்பவுமே சொல்லுவேன் ஓகே தமிழ் எடுகேஷன் ஆஃப் பிரைமரி எச்சேகேத்தி நீங்க வந்து ஸ்கிரீன்ல பார்க்கலாம் தமிழ் எடுகேஷன் ஆஃப் பிரைமரி எச்சேகேத்தி இந்த முகநூல் பக்கம் வந்தீங்கன்னா அவ்வப்போது நம்முடைய எங்களை கருத்தரங்குகள் தொடர்பாக கருத்துக்கள் எல்லாம் உங்களுக்கு வந்து கொடுக்கப்படும் இந்த லிங்க் கேட்கறீங்க ஓகே இன்னைக்கு வந்து ஆசிரியர் உங்களுக்காக வந்து ஒரு குயிஸ் தயாரிச்சிருக்காங்க ஓகே பிறகு ஒரு பத்து பதினைந்து நிமிடத்துக்கு பிறகு அந்த குயிஸ் உங்கள் நம்மளுடைய பேஸ்புக் பேஜ் தமிழ் எடுகேஷன் ஆஃப் பிரைமரி எஜுகேத்தில பதிவேற்றப்படும் பேஸ்புக் இல்லாதவங்க இந்த யூடியூப் வந்து நீங்க ஒரு அரை மணி நேரம் கழித்து வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா இந்த யூடியூப்ல வந்து அந்த குயிஸ் லிங்க் கீழே இருக்கும் ஓகே நீங்க அதை பயன்படுத்திக் கொள்ளலாம் உடனே இல்ல ஒரு பத்து நிமிடம் ஒரு இருபது நிமிடம் கழித்து நீங்க வந்து இந்த யூடியூப் இப்ப நீங்க பாத்துட்டு இருக்கீங்களா இதே லிங்க நீங்க மீண்டும் தட்டி வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஓகே உங்களுக்கு வந்து இந்த குயிஸ் லிங்க் கொடுக்கப்பட்டிருக்கும் யாருக்கெல்லாம் முகநூல் பேஸ்புக் இருக்கோ மாத்திராம நம்முடைய பேஸ்புக் பேஜ் தமிழ் எடுகேஷன் ஆஃப் பிரைமரி எஜுகேத்தி அங்க வந்தீங்கன்னா இந்த வீடியோ நடந்த நேரலைக்கு கீழே காமெண்ட் பாக்ஸ்ல இன்றைய குயிஸ் உங்களுக்கு வழங்கப்பட்டிருக்கும் ஆக நாளை இதே ஆறு முப்பது மணிக்கு தமிழ் மொழி எங்களை கருத்தரங்கம் நடைபெற இருக்கின்றது ஆக நாளை இணைய மரவாதீர்கள் மாணவர்களே மாணவர்கள் வீட்டில் இருந்து கொண்டே சிறந்த முறையில் கல்வி கற்க வேண்டும் என்பதற்காக மிக சிறப்பாக இன்றைய கருத்தரங்கம் மிக சிறப்பாக நடத்தப்பட்டது ஓகே ஒரு சில பேர் சர்டிபிகேட் கேட்கறீங்க நான் சொன்னது போல நாளை நம்மளுடைய இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்கம் முடிந்த பிறகுதான் உங்களுடைய ரிஜிஸ்ட்ரேஷன் நீங்க ஏற்கனவே பதிந்து கொண்டீர்கள் அல்லவா ஃபோர் பாயிண்ட் ஜீரோ ஓகே அதுக்கு பதிந்து கொண்டவர்களுக்கு முறைப்படி அனுப்பி வைக்கப்படும் நான் வழக்கமாக சொல்வதுதான் ஒரு நாளைக்கு நம்ம நூறு சர்டிபிகேட் தான் அனுப்பி வைக்க முடியும் அதே கொஞ்சம் பொறுமை காத்து நீங்க ஐந்து நாட்களுக்குள்ள உங்களுக்கு வந்து சர்டிபிகேட் அனுப்பி வைக்கப்படும் ஆஹ் எனக்குறை இருபத்தி ஆறாம் தேதி முடிந்து ஒன்னு ஜூலைக்குள்ள உங்களுக்கு சர்டிபிகேட் கொடுக்கப்படும் கொஞ்சம் பொறுமையா இருந்து பொறுமை காத்து நீங்கள் பெற்றுக்கொள்ளும்படி அன்போடு கேட்டுக்கொள்கிறேன் ஒரு சில பேர் வந்து ஆஹ் தொடர்ந்து நம்முடைய முகநூல்ல வந்து சர்டிபிகேட் எங்கன்னு கேட்டுட்டு இருக்கீங்க நான் சொன்னது போல வெபினார் த்ரீ பாயிண்ட் ஜீரோ இன்று நாளைக்குள் உங்களுக்கு கிடைத்துவிடும் வெபினார் த்ரீ பாயிண்ட் ஜீரோவோட சர்டிபிகேட் இன்று நாளைக்குள் உங்களுக்கு கிடைத்துவிடும் நாளை மறுநாள் கிடைக்காத வரைக்கும் என்னை தொடர்பு கொள்ளுவோம் உங்களுக்கு வந்து அந்த லிங்க் நான் அனுப்பி வைக்கப்படும் அந்த லிங்க்ல நீங்க முறையான ஜிமெயில் ஐடிய பதியணும் நிறைய பேர் ஜிமெயில் ஐடி ரொம்ப தவறா போடுறீங்க ஒவ்வொரு முறையும் நாங்க அனுப்பும் போது நிறைய பேருடைய வந்து போய் சேர மாட்டேது ஆகவே லிங்க்ல உங்களுடைய ஜிமெயில் ஐடியை பதியும் போது எந்த ஸ்பெல்லிங் ஏரர் இல்லாம பாத்துக்கங்க மாணவர்களே தயவு செய்து நீங்க வந்து அந்த லிங்க்ல பதியும் போது முடிந்த அளவுக்கு பெற்றோர்களுடைய வழிகாட்டுதலின்படி நீங்க வந்து பதிவு செய்யும்படி கேட்டுக்கொள்கிறேன் அப்ப அந்த தவறு நடக்காது ஓகே ஓகே மீண்டும் நாளை சந்திப்போம் மாணவர்களே நாளை உங்களுக்காக தமிழ் மொழி இயங்கலை கருத்தரங்கம் நடைபெறும் ஓகே நம்மளுடைய பாரதி கிரியேட்டிவ் சேனல் சார்பாக நம்முடைய ஆசிரியை திருமதி கலைமணி அவர்களுக்கு நன்றியை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கின்றோம் மிக சிறப்பான இன்றைய இங்கிலீஷ் வெபினார் மிக சிறப்பாக நடத்தினார் அவருக்கு நம்முடைய வாழ்த்துக்கள் மீண்டும் சந்திப்போம் உங்களிடமிருந்து நாங்கள் விடைபெறுகிறோம் நான் ஆசிரியர் கே பாலமுருகன் மீண்டும் நாளை சந்திப்போம் தேங்க்யூ வெரி மச்